Oh man, that's almost as good as the noise I can make. My stomach grows loud as I park my bike in the garage. Nikki, please be home for once. I wonder what we're going to have for dinner. As I enter the kitchen, I see a dainty strawberry cake sitting on the kitchen table. Cake for dinner. I peer closely at the layered cake and use my fingers to taste the whipped cream. It melts on my tongue as a cloud of sweetness. Fresh whipped cream. That's the only kind of whipped cream I'll eat. Mom spoiled us. She never bought whipped cream because she always made it herself. Wait a minute. Mom's birthday. Nikki? Did Nikki bake this cake for Mom's birthday? I search the house to see no sign of her. There's no text for her, uh, her on my phone either. Clearly she came home after school, which means there's only one place she can be. I grab my keys and hop back on my bike to find Nikki. We lived next to a park back home and Nikki would often escape to there when she was upset. Just as I expected, I find Nikki swinging uh, for lonely on the swing. Oh God. Her head is bent as she gazes down at something in her hands. I take a seat beside her. She glances at me but doesn't speak. Instead, she cups the lo uh, open locket in her hands. The one that she usually hangs around her neck inside is a picture of mom and dad. You okay? I don't know. Mom would have loved the cake you made her. Nikki snaps the locket shut and holds it to her chest. I had to do something, you know? Today is mom's birthday and I couldn't not celebrate it. I know. So I thought I'd make her a cake like we used to, but then... Her voice trembles and she takes a minute to compose herself. Then that cake, it was, it was like it was taunting me. A reminder that mom will never get a chance to eat it. It's not fair. Nikki's knuckles turn white as she clutches at her locket. Her hands begin to shake. I barely got any time with her before she was taken away and I just want her back. Nikki. I know I'm being crazy, but I just keep thinking it's my fault. Tears trickle down her cheeks and leave wet stains on her shirt. Instinctively, I pull her in for a hug, and she leans against me. It wasn't your fault, Nikki. It is! You have no control over this. She pulls away and falls silent. When she finally speaks, her voice is thick. I missed the bus that day. What? The reason they left the cafe is because I missed the bus and needed a ride home. I keep thinking, what if I had just gotten on that bus as soon as class ended? I wasn't even doing anything important. I was just hanging out and lost track of time. I remember being so annoyed when they didn't show up. I was so angry I had to walk home and all I could think about was how much... Her voice falters. Much I hated them. You didn't mean that. You were angry. What kind of daughter thinks like that? When I remember, I just feel so disgusted with myself. Me as it may, what happened wasn't your fault, Nikki. You didn't tell that driver to hit them. You can't keep blaming yourself. Then why do I feel like I'm being punished? Because this sucks. Because it's so easy to think about all those years that have been stolen from you. And to lament that loss. But you can't keep thinking like that. Be happy for the time that you did spend together. Focus on the good times when you had them. The last thing mom and dad would want is for you to be sad because of them. They want to see you happy. I know. I just miss them so much. I know. I miss them too. But on the bright side, at least you still got me. Nikki sighs. I thought you were trying to make me feel better, not worse. It worked. Hey. She lets out a weak laugh. Her tears have stopped and so there's some color returning to her face. Remember mom's cake from last year? It was completely inedible. You mean the second cake? 
The one you baked for mom because you forgot her birthday. Oh, yeah. Oops. Nikki laughs. Mom tried so hard to eat it, but eventually she just gave up. Not my finest moment, but at least it wasn't as bad as the one Dad baked the year before. You mean when he almost burned our entire house down? Nikki laughs so hard that she snorts, which makes her laugh harder. Uh, her laughter is infectious and I can't help but join in. I think I got a lot more Dad in me than you do. Yeah, but it's not all bad. You got a lot of his good qualities, too. Like how you're always there for me when I need you. It's a hard job, but somebody has to do it. Nikki bumps me playfully with her swing. Rude! No, you know what's rude? Leaving a perfectly delicious cake untouched in the kitchen. Well, actually, it's not untouched. We did try the whipped cream, though. That's true. It was made for eating. Let's go eat it. Grinning from ear to ear, Nikki nods and stands up. Together we head, uh, head to my bike and I drive us back home. Well, this shit got heavy. As soon as I park, the two of us hop off my bike and eagerly rush into the kitchen and freeze. There's only one third of the cake remaining, and a trail of crumbs started from the kitchen table and ended at Uncle Kaito's face. Are you shitting me? He ate two thirds of a cake. How big was this cake? How big was this fucking cake that we're talking about? Because I know they make the little mini cakes, but if this was a cake that I'm thinking of, then we're talking a full size cake. We're talking 12 inch cake. And he ate two thirds of it? Are you shitting me? I can only stare in stunned silence at the scene. Uncle Kaito? He pauses, a fork full of moist yellow cake is halfway in his mouth. Did you eat all of the cake? Uncle Kaito looks from his fork to Nikki, then back at the fork. I want my lawyer. <laughs> Best response ever. Nikki and I burst out laughing as Uncle Kaito shoves the fork into his mouth. Nikki and I split the rest of the cake while Kaito looks long longingly. Nikki is all smiles for the rest of the night as Uncle Kaito asks us about our day. I tuck into bed early and know that I have a busy day of frolicking in the hot springs tomorrow. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about! Soon, I'm dreaming about hot water and hot girls. Nice. I wake up to the first sound of my alarm and jump out of bed. I need to meet my friends at the train station so we all can head over together to the hot springs. And I'd rather not be the last one there. They might leave without me. Just kidding. No, they wouldn't. Would they? Probably. Either way, I throw on some clothes and race to pack up what is needed. After grabbing a quick breakfast, I hop on my bike and drive to the train station. I haven't been back here since my arrival in Izakaze. It's exactly the same as I remember. People were bustling back and forth, and the whole station is blanketed with the buzz of, uh... Conversations. Uh, of course it's going to be exactly the same. It's a fucking train station. And it looks relatively new, so of course it's going to be the same. For some reason, the familiarity is comforting. I purchase my ticket and find Kaori, Mayu, Valerie, and Yuna already waiting on the platform. Hey. Yuna and Valerie wave as I approach while Mayu and Kaori nod in greeting. You made it. So did you. I glance around us. Where's show? Running late, like usual. Doesn't surprise me. He'll be here. I hope so. He has all of our tickets. I guess if you have all everyone's ticket, then technically you could show up at whatever time you want. <laughs> it's like get in, try getting into the hot spring without your tickets. Kyrie gives me a look. I mean. Of course he'll be here. She crosses her arms, but otherwise falls silent. Even Yuna looks worried as she checks the time. we still got a few minutes before the train comes. Once the seconds tick by, even I'm beginning to lose hope. Thankfully, show appears. Hey guys, ready to get our heat on? It's about goddamn time. We stare at show. Uh, that came out wrong. Yeah. He looks around, a wide grin on his face. Awesome, the gang's all here! The laborious roaring of the engine is heard before the train is sighted. Sho points to the approaching train. 
just in time too, because here's the train. And not a second too late. You are cutting it really close, Joe. You can cut it late as long as you want, but as long as you are not late, you're not late. I'm right on time. So he is a wizard. Everyone quiets down as we get ready to board. We settle into our seats and enjoy the ride. I was hoping there was going to be some sort of conversation that happened on the train, but I guess not. Once we arrive, we step off the train and stretch our legs. There's a beautiful hotel in the distance, and the hot springs are tucked in the mountains behind it. Alright, here we are safe and sound. Let's go check in first. She'll lead the way up to the hotel and we trail behind, enjoying the scenery. I breathe in deeply, letting the crisp mountain air fill my lungs. Just being here already helps me feel rejuvenated. I don't know, it's outside. The, the disgusting outside world? Are you serious? Ugh. We enter the hotel and the front desk agent gives us the key to our rooms. Valerie and Yuna are bunking together while Kauri and Mayu are sharing a room. Obviously, that means Sho and I are sharing a room. The girls disappear into their rooms, but not before agreeing to meet right outside the hotel in 10 minutes. I mean, no, here's the setup how it should have been. Sho and Mayu. Us and Yuna. Valerie and Kauri. That solves all the issues. Sho and I enter our room, and he immediately flops into the bed closest to the window. Dick, I wanted that bed. I claim this bed. Of course you do. Of course, then again, he did have the tickets that are, well, paying for the place. I'll take the other bed. Alright, I'm fine with this one. I drop my bags into the bed closest to the wall in the doorway. I don't like being next to the window anyway. Even with the curtains closed, I still feel too exposed. Exposed? Like if I were to open the curtains, a face would be staring in. She looks warily at the window. Don't say things like that! Do you want me to have nightmares? Sorry. <laughs> I would have pulled up like some sort of sniper thing. Once we had a chance to rest and put down our things, we head into the lobby and wait outside. The girls trickle in a few minutes later. Should we go for a soak now? We want to save that for tonight. Trust me, it's way more relaxing at the end of the day. Oh. So, what should we do instead? Hmm. Sho pulls out the tickets and studies the text on there. Um, what about... Maya's voice trails off. What about what? What if we toured the gardens? That could be good. She points to the side of clearing of blossoms and trees. They look really pretty. Well, I guess it's decided, huh? We get a discounted price for the tours, too, since we already have tickets to the hot springs. Nice. Valerie jumps excitedly. Let's do it, then. She races towards the gardens. Wait! Don't just run off like that! God, she's like... Kauri acts like an annoying older sister. That's exactly how she acts. Kauri takes off after her as the rest of us scramble to catch up. Oh man, look at that sky shot. You gotta have one of these. That's actually a pretty nice sky shot too. Not a visual novel without those clouds. Luckily, we arrive right before the next scheduled tour and we're all able to secure a spot with the group. The tour guide leads us on a gravel path and speaks non-stop about the history of the gardens and each plant that we see. I listen intently as he talks about the original lord who commissioned the garden as a way to show off his status and wealth. I remember learning about the same guy in our foreign international bridging class, so it's extra cool to be standing here in his garden. The guides lecture us on each plant as we pass is far less engaging, and my attention wanes. I survey the flowers around me. Bright petals of color sway gently in the breeze, and a few of them float towards our feet. I wonder how they kept this place so green this time of year. As I glance around the group, everyone seems to be focused on the greenery around us, except for Sho, who seems to be focused on a perky hard body in a separate guide group further down the path. Enjoying the view? Sho snaps back to reality and grins. You know it, Brosif. It's beautiful. Yeah, the garden's nice too. Sho pauses and then looks embarrassed. Was I that obvious? Only if you consider openly staring obvious. 
Well, what do you think of her? Cute, right? Nah, not my type. Eh, I shrug. She's alright, but not really my type. I mean, you've been surrounded by girls, and no one seems to really be your type. Do you even have a type, Brosif? Uh, yes. Surrounded? Sure, at school. There's a major cutie with a booty over there. <laughs> okay, I get it. We should go talk to her. I'm not sure Mayu would appreciate you doing that. Not for me, for you. What? I'm going to wingman for you. Please, no. It'll be a thank you for all those times you helped me out. No, you don't, you don't have to do that. Please, no. That's really not necessary. My protest falls on deaf ears as show already starts to lag from the group. After he creates enough space, he hops off the path and walks uh, through the garden. What are you doing? Taking a shortcut. We can't catch up to them by hanging around the group. You're gonna get us kicked out by doing that shit. Smart thinking. He grins. I know. We pass our group before hopping back on the path. I step back with no incident, but show trips and waves his arms wildly to balance himself. Whoa! He fails to keep his balance, but before he can face plant on the hard gravel, I step in to catch him. As he continues to hold him up, Sho looks at me with admiration in his eyes. Oh, please no. No. Please no. I know where this is going. Please don't. Please don't. You saved me, Brosif. Drop him. Fucking drop him. He would have done the same for me. Suddenly, a croaky voice yells out. Get a room! I knew it! I fucking knew it! Fuck! Everyone around us freezes. As one, we turn towards the voice and see an, <laughs> see an old Japanese man waving his cane angrily in the air. <laughs> I fucking knew it! Sho quickly removes himself from my arms and holds up his hands defensively. Hey, it's not what you think! God damn it. God damn it. <sighs> I stare coldly at him. How's what we are aren't doing any of your business? How oh, rude. Back in my day, young people respected their elders. With one last grumpy harumph, the old man hobbles his way towards the trees. I thought we had to stay on the path. Forget about him. Let's just refocus our efforts. Show's face falls. I follow the line of sight and grimace as a cute girl is laughing at us. Maybe we should just go back. Yeah. Sorry, Brosif. It's not okay. Regrettably, we spend more time together before rejoining the group. The tour was very beautiful and I enjoyed the leisurely pace uh, we took around the gardens, although... I did learn a lot more about plants than I ever wanted to know. Once the tour was over, we regrouped back outside the hotel. Hey, did everyone enjoy the tour? I used sighs dreamingly. The flowers were so beautiful! I felt like I was walking through a fairy tale. Or one of your fantasy books. I'm glad you had fun, Mayu. I thought it was really pretty too, but I found the history of the place to be the most interesting part. Kauri shrugs. Yeah, it was alright. <laughs> I was expecting that from her. It reminded me a little bit of home. On the outskirts of town there was a cute little museum which also included a garden walk. That sounds really nice. It was. I thought it was good, but I could have used less of all that flower talk. You aren't the only one. I thought it was informative. But enough of that. It's now time for the main event. Yay. I cannot wait to soak in that glorious water. Same here. Mayu grins and even Kyrie cracks a smile. That's rare. We eagerly follow Sho into the hotel and he presents us our tickets. We had to wait for what felt like a couple hours at least while they prepared the place. Afterwards, an attendant leads Sho and I to the male changing room while the, uh, another attendant led the girls away.